Welcome to the first episode of Talking Graphs. What this series of weekly videos is going to be talking about is it's going to be looking at different physiologic relationships and, and look at how they can be illustrated using a graph. So for anyone studying or learning about physiology, you'll notice that graphs are used all of the time to look at the relationship between two variables. And they're incredibly valuable because a graph itself if you don't get lost in all the details, if you just step back and look at a graph, it's actually a symbol of how an enzyme or a molecule or some entire organism behaves. And so when we look at the hemoglobin and oxygen curve that we're seeing here, you have two variables. On the x-axis, you have partial pressure of oxygen. Now, most of the time when they illustrate this graph, they don't tell you exactly where that partial pressure is because it could be in the lungs, could be in the active tissues, and so they leave off any location for the PO2 because it can apply to more than one location. But for the point of view of, or for the, for the benefit of learning this for the first time, I want you to imagine that that PO2 is in the tissues of the body. So the 100 over here is 100 millimeters of mercury, which is the pressure of oxygen, but you can just think of it as a lot of oxygen. And it doesn't mean 100%, but you might as well think of it that way. It means a lot of oxygen over here, very low oxygen over here. And again, think of this as the tissues. I think it's useful for learning this for the first time. And then over here on the y-axis, you have oxyhemoglobin percent saturation. And so in this case, it is a percent. And 100 represents 100% 100 saturation of the hemoglobin. So that means the hemoglobin is holding as many oxygens as it possibly can. And then down here, it's as little as it can. And so normally, hemoglobin, when it's in an environment where you have between about 190 millimeters of mercury of oxygen around the hemoglobin. So this would be in a tissue, for instance, again, we're gonna look at it from the tissue perspective. This would be a tissue that is not doing much. And the tissue has lots of oxygen present, it's not very active. And so the hemoglobin that passes by that tissue is going to hold on to all of its oxygen molecules and it's going to continue on to somewhere else, maybe where the oxygen level is lower. And so this curve for hemoglobin is what's called a sigmoid curve. It just means that it's an S shape. And this top region, this area that's more flat, has the least slope, that area is where hemoglobin is, has a very high affinity for oxygen, and that means that it holds onto it very tightly. And you can see that it holds on to it tightly because when you look at the x-axis of this graph, between about 170, even though you have a big change in the partial pressure or the amount of oxygen around the hemoglobin, you have a very small change in the percent saturation, which means that hemoglobin is not giving away the oxygen. It's holding on to it or has a very high affinity. But then this S-shaped curve goes into a very steep downhill area. This steep area is where hemoglobin starts to behave a little differently. When hemoglobin gets into environments where the oxygen level is below about 60 millimeters of mercury, so now we're getting into some active tissues that are pushing down the amount of oxygen because they're consuming it. And so when you get into this range right in here, now hemoglobin behaves differently. Now for a very small change, let's look at between 50 and 40 millimeters of mercury, you get a very large change in the amount of oxygen that's bound to hemoglobin. It goes down, meaning that the hemoglobin is giving off oxygen to those active tissues. And then as you go even lower here from 40 to 30, here's 40 on the line, Here's 30 on the line, huge change. So a very steep part of the line means that the hemoglobin is dropping in saturation very rapidly. So these are going to be areas, again, where the tissue, PO2, is very, very low. And it's going to continue down this very steep curve. And th the reason that this steep curve is very valuable is that hemoglobin is only giving off a ton of oxygen in areas where the PO2 is very, very low. And this ensures that the hemoglobin will deliver oxygen to the regions that need it most rather than give it all away to some area that's only slightly active or something like that. So it holds on to it until it gets to tissues that are very, very low in oxygen.
And that overall is kind of the big picture here. So I'm going to do a second video that talks about these variables here. But overall, just to sum it up, basically hemoglobin holds on to oxygen very tightly until it encounters a region of your body where the PO2 or the amount of oxygen is extremely low. Then it changes its behavior. It gives off those oxygens very quickly. And again, that relationship is uh, symbolized by the shape of this curve.